Hey, uh, hi everyone. This is Vedant and Adarsh. Uh, we a little bit of intro about us. We are both uh, software engineer at Harness and also maintainers at Kitmas Chaos. So um, that's that. Um, this session is going to be about how um, you know uh, you can elevate uh, you know quality of your own uh, projects, and you know we will give some examples referring you know how what we do at Litmus Chaos, and also um, you know how um, you can also uh, integrate you know Chaos also as a part of your CI/CD pipelines. So let's go to agenda. So yeah, I mean the most uh, the important part is to just discuss about what is litmus chaos before we um, talk about why you know we, uh, we are trying to you know increase the quality of litmus chaos, and um, then we will talk about like why is quality important for us, and then you know uh, we will talk about you know what are different aspects we are going to touch upon. And um, then, you know, we can discuss about, you know, um, how you can also, you know, do the same or maybe, you know, I mean, you can also give some suggestions or GitHub or issues everywhere, you know, what we can do more. All right. So going to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. So like, let's talk about the importance of quality in modern software development. So in modern software development, quality is not just a uh, like, uh, nice to have thing. So it's a critical element that determines the success of the product. So basically, let's say currently uh, it's a very fast grown demand for the faster release, more features, bug fixes. So for that maintaining high quality ensured that the product and, uh, and the project meets the customer expectation and uh, that can work properly in the real world environment. So before, uh, can you go to next? Uh, yeah. So uh, before defining the standard uh, for the quality in litmus chaos, we have faced uh, several challenges that has impacted uh, us in a several ways, uh, like when the uh, like uh, performance of the development, performance of the application, uh, development cycles, and all. So there are the, some key uh, points that has affected us are uh, inconsistent code style challenges in managing pull requests, slow manual testing, uh, less development velocity, and less confidence in the application reliability. So let's talk about the inconsistent code style. So as you know, Litmus is an open source tool. There, so there are a lot of contributors that contributes from the community. So basically, there are a lot of developments happening and a lot of PRs are getting open. So and every dev uh, works in their own way and their style of coding in a different way. If you don't have any standard uh, then uh, like uh, you have don't defined any standard in your project, then it's like everyone will merge, everyone will do the way uh, they are comfortable with, and then it will cause uh, inconsistency in the software de development. There will be a lot of time will go on fixing the bugs and all. So, and there will be a lot of uh, uh, struggle between the co uh, collaborators as well. So, so this is the one point that we have faced. And the other point is, let's say, someone uh, has merged the peer then we have to review and merge it but currently at that time we didn't have that automation so we were doing all the thing manually that is that is causing the delay in merging any peers like we have to check the builds manually how the codes were written and how the lint is everything we have to check manually so basically that that is causing us the delay in merging as so that is result in the like some sometime there is a merge conflict happen because of the delay uh, we merge the PR that will also cause very hiccups in uh, community and uh, so there is these two points were on the like how uh, we faced issue with the PRs now let's say every once we are doing the releases so for, before that we were doing some uh, QA testing that was manual so we were uh, testing all the scenarios. Uh, manually and that is also very time consuming and very time intensive so and as we, we all are human so we cannot uh, just go and test all the scenarios everything so that can uh, like so basically after the release we were finding many bugs so uh, that was the one of the biggest demerit of the uh, what we were doing as a manual testing so all the result of uh, inconsistent code challenges for merging the PRs and manual testing was also resulting in the less development velocity because developers are also uh, included in those uh, cycles and they are uh, working on uh, like merging or reviewing PRs and doing some testing uh, of, of the project. 
so that will cause the like uh, velocity will get uh, good place for the project now uh, let, let's say okay you have done your uh, uh, the, done all your testing and all but how you'll make sure that the product or project that you're shipping is reliable and resilient and it is uh, going to work seamlessly in the user environment so for that uh, we have uh, we uh, have introduced kiosk engineering we are dog fooding litmus only uh, to test the ci build of litmus uh, can you go next with them yeah with them you can go yeah sure uh, thanks adash so i think yeah that was the, the section where we discussed about what were the you know challenges you know i mean we were facing and you will face as well when you start with a new project or you may already be having a project you know or product right and if you um, don't look at these as uh, you know perspectives you might you might also be facing the same issues so um now um, we will talk about like you know um what are different aspects of um quality gates which we have touched upon till now uh, you know to uh, you know to you know make it better so if you go to the next slide um so yeah i mean this section we have divided into two parts one is uh, like uh, having quality gates as part of pull request and one is having quality gate as part of your release process where you um do end to end testing or api testing so um in this section i will be talking about you know um how uh, you can enhance the or the whole code review um experience uh, and and you know the this the checks with pull request so um like to start okay yeah starting in the first point is you know we need to uh, standardize the process for code contributions now uh, let's say you are starting with a new project or you already have a you know a open source project with you you have a great community with you and they you know they are liking your product they would want to make some enhancements in your products right now um, to enable them to make those you know contributions you know to your project we also you know need to you know um, let them know how this you know code is working and what are the quality like code quality standards or styling we are following right because as you know others were saying right um, every developers has a you know different way of writing the code right so that's where uh, you know we have to scenario the process the whole code styling you know we have to follow so that everyone can understand the code next is once you have scenarioed the process let's say you have documented it right and um, someone is raising a pr how will you check it that they have actually followed it right i mean you can't be going into different project uh, pull request and manually you know going e one by one line and okay you have followed this or not right you need some automation in place for that one so that's where you know automated quality checks comes in the picture um, we will talk about different tools that uh, you know um, you know uh, we have and what tools we are using now once we have made sure that you know um, everyone is following the code uh, code styling which we have defined and it is getting checked as part of pr now that part is gone now we can actually you know focus on the actual um, potential issues or the implementation which is actually important for the business or even for the open source community right so that's where the th third point comes in now you have developed the feature and you are good with the code styling as well right and we are able to review it in a better way next is uh, since you are adding a feature uh, you know uh, what are the chances that it won't you know break the existing features right or let's say you are adding a new feature what are the chances that in future if i make a contribution i won't break it so that's where automated unit tests comes in now why automated and why not to um, you know run it locally you can surely look you know run all the unit tests locally but at the same time you know there are times where unit tests will also um, become huge and complex and you know they would need some different you know operation resources cpu memory and all so that's where you know it's better to automate them as part of pr right now um, if you look at what are the points we have discussed till now um, yeah uh, we are we are following the good code quality that is also made sure by checks then pr we are able to review the feature is built unit tests are in place next you merge the pr and after that the build fail now you're not able to deploy it to your you know development environment or staging or qa environment what happens now you will go back to you know uh, whoever had raised the pr and then you will you know you will let them know what is the issue then they will fix it and again raise a pr this is a big you know feedback loop so why to wait till you know it will fail right why not just you know check it in the pull request so that's where automated build checks comes in um like in our case if we take the example in litmus chaos we have you know uh, we we are building images we are building binaries so if we build it after merging the pr that will you know uh, give us issues it's better to build them as part of pr where you know uh, contributor is already using the pr right so 
that's how we are making sure that all builds should pass before even merging the PR. Now um, you have, you know, um, build the feature, it's built, deployed. I mean, you even de delivered it. Um, now, you know, um, there are many adopters who are using in you know, your product and then at the same time, you know, they come in, okay, right? There are many vulnerabilities in the, you know, project. We have to fix this. Now, again, if you see, this is the biggest, uh, you know, big feedback loop. <laughs> you, you know, raise the PR, it is tested, it is built and it is deployed and released. Now, after that, you are getting to know okay, it had vulnerabilities. So that also, it's better, you know, um, you add those vulnerabilities and tools. There are many tools. We will discuss about what tools we are using to uh, automate those scans as part of your PR, right? So uh, that's on this side. Uh, now we can just look at, you know, what tools we are using. So first thing, I mean, that's the important one, how we, where you will automate these things. You will need a CI CD platform. So since Litmus Chaos is open source, we are using, you know, uh, GitHub Actions. Um, uh, that, that's where we are able to run all our checks, which we just discussed. Next is code quality. So as you were discussing, right, you have defined a, process, uh, defined a document where you are saying that, okay, you know, you need to follow this code styling and all. How will you make sure that everyone is following it in an automated way? There are tools. So like in our case, our tech stack is JavaScript and Golang, and in some places, Helm and Docker. But if you see in JavaScript, uh, there's a tool, ESLint, you can use to check the code styling for your own code base. Similarly, for Golang, we have Golang CI Lint. And um, I, I would say, you know, from, you know, uh, there have been contributions from community. Um, we have also added Go imports and, you know, Go more tidy and many other checks in our GitHub actions. So that's how we are able to make sure that, you know, code styling is good. Next is secrets scanner. Uh, we didn't talk about it much in the last slide. So this is something, I mean, you know, based on our journey since, I mean, you all were, would be knowing about it. We are working towards our graduation. So uh, as part of security audit, one thing which we saw is that, you know, there were a few secrets which were, you know, part of our GitHub repository, which were exposed, but they were also deactivated. So there was no issue. But how do we make sure that um, um, this does not come again? We need to add a scan as part of pull request. So we checked around it and, you know, we found the stool get leaks, which, you know, um, on every PR, whoever is running, you can just run is on, uh, run it on your uh, pull request and it will tell you if there is any secret edit as part of, you know, of your pull request, right? So now with this, we are able to make sure that no um, GitHub uh, or any secret, any third party AWS GCP secret doesn't come into GitHub repository. But you can say that, you know, I mean, you are, you are only able to find out when you someone is raising a PR, but they already pushed it to your to their own repository. So see, I think, yeah, I mean, that is something that, you know, I mean, we cannot stop that's their repository. They can, you know, have their own pre-commit hooks and all, but still we are able to reduce the feedback loop. I mean, if let's say the Git leaks was not there as part of pull request, what would happen like the scenario would be they will raise a PR. Secret is part of that PR. We merged it. Now it is already exposed. They got to know about it. They will deactivate it. And then they will again raise a PR. We will review it. And then we will merge it. So this is a whole you know big loop. Instead, when they first raise the PR, we already found there's a Git leaks issue. They fixed it. They merged the PR. Now on their side, they just have to deactivate those credentials and remove it from their GitHub repository. So this way, you know, we are able to separate out the concerns and also reduce the feedback loop. So that's on the secret scanner. Then, um, yeah, so the next is vulnerability scanner. So we have different tools, Trivi, Snick. Um, you can use your own tool. There are many tools, you know, in open source. So which helps us to, you know, detect any uh, vulnerability as part of PR itself. So we don't have to wait till release and then scan it again. Next is code ownership. So code ownership is important because, I mean, as we discussed, right, we have to define code styling for the whole code base. Who will define that? Everyone is writing, you know, uh, code. Let's say in our case, it's a mono repo. Um, we have around uh, four or five components. So for all of them, uh, you know, um, there are multiple, you know, owners or maintainers, right? So once we define the code ownership, and that is very much, you know, um, doable and easy to do via GitHub code owners file. You can do that. And that helps in reviewing the PRs faster as well. So once you have the code ownership, they can also create a contributing guide, which uh, you may have already seen in multiple uh, GitHub repositories in our in our um, GitHub repo. Also, we have a contributing guide. So that is what you know helps to um, helps and enables other you know community members to also contribute. And then last is unit test. So unit test also there are many tools. Uh, in our case, as I said, the text check is JavaScript and Go. So for JavaScript, we are using Jest, and for Go, we are using. Testify and many other tools like Go, Gingo, Go Test, etc. 
so that's on the tool side um next is just a glimpse of how our um, pull request pipeline looks like so this is just a high level view here what we have if you look at um there is a git leaks scan stage which is if you look at it's very independent it is not dependent on any stage why because it doesn't have to depend on you know um, any other check uh, it is going to scan the whole code base whichever wherever you have raised the pr now next if you see we have build checks as we were discussing we have unit test check and we have also uh, backend checks and front end checks which are code quality checks now why are they dependent right um if you look at um as I was saying, we have a mono repo. There are around five components. If a developer is raising a PR for front end component, we don't want to run the back end component also, uh, all the unit tests, code quality checks, because um, that will reduce the velocity. Like if someone is raising a PR for front end, they don't want to wait for a build which is happening for back end component, right? So to do that, there is a state changes, which actually, uh, whenever you are raising a PR, it detects uh, which folder had the changes. And accordingly, if front end had the changes, it will only run the front end code quality checks and only the uh, web unit test and Docker build front end. Others will be skipped. And if you see right in this case, also authentication server and event tracker are skipped because like wherever we took this screenshot of, um, in that PR, the these folder didn't have any changes. And same same goes for backend changes. So um, just to give you a little uh, granular view of what is happening inside these stages. So one is build stage. Build stage is where um, we are building your code, like the whole Docker image, whatever you did, the changes in the code along with that. Once that image is available, we are also running the Trivi scanner here itself. So with this stage, we are able to make sure that the code is buildable. Uh, if we merge this PR, uh, it will not fail to you know deploy. And also it doesn't have any vulnerability. So two uh, we marks here. Then um, code quality side, as uh, as you are seeing, there are two stages, front end and back end. So in front end we are running Jest, and similarly in back end we are running GoLang and you know GoLang Celeste and many other tools. So that's how we are able to make sure that um, front end code quality is also checked and back end code quality is also checked. So I think with that um, we have covered all these stages. So next uh, to others for covering all the automation that we are doing with the PR check. So now let's say uh, you have added all the automations in the PR, you are checking the build, you are checking the lint, you are checking the vulnerability. But once the PR gets worse, how you will enforce that like, okay, uh, it is not breaking uh, the existing features or it, how it is compatible, how it is integrated with the other existing features or it is not breaking. So for that, end-to-end uh, -end testing comes into the picture. End-to-end -to -end testing showed that entire pro project is uh, like working as expected as per the user's perspective. So basically, this is one of the critical uh, tests you can say in uh, quality checks that needs to be done so that basically user is going to use the, the project. So if every uh, user-facing services should work as expected. And then there is an API testing that is, as you are like the modern uh, uh, software development, API is the building block of everything. Uh, so basically API testing is very critical in that case for all the integrations internal and external as well, like how it is communicating to the internal services and the external services as well. If there is any latency or how it is behaving. So it's very uh, important to test uh, the APIs as well. And then uh, we have con uh, included CLI compatibility testing as well. As you know, like Litmus has a CLI called Litmus ETL. And uh, from using Litmus ETL, you can do uh, most of the operations like connecting a uh, infrastructure, creating project, uh, running experiment, creating experiment and all. So let's say if a user have pushed some changes in Kiosk Center, how do you know like it is compatible with uh, the CLI? So for that, you have to do do the uh, compatibility testing as well or or whether the changes are gone to Litmus ETL or not. So uh, these three uh, that uh, we are doing extensively, uh, for but uh, but we are also adding uh, like uh, resilience testing as well. Like we are using Litmus Chaos only uh, to do the uh, resilience testing as well. And uh, like uh, what we are doing, like let's say how we'll ensure that, okay, currently, okay, the as per the user the it is working properly apis are working fine but is it reliable how it's working because uh litmus is a on-prem solution it is going to be deployed on a user's environment so how it is going to behave how is 
going to be user experience so for that we uh, we are enabling resilience testing for that so in uh, now just next slide so here is the example of how we are doing uh, compatibility testing and e 2 a testing here you can see that uh, we are testing all the operations that uh, can be done through litmus ctl to test the compatibility with the latest changes in the kiosk center and similarly in the right hand side of the screen you can see that we are using cypress for our e2v testing and uh, as part of e2v we are uh, doing the api testing as well uh, with our next screen so uh, now we have a demo like how we are automating and how we are uh, doing chaos in an automated manner in our uh, qa uh, or cycle so let me share my screen just give me a minute I believe my screen is visible. Uh, Vedan, can you confirm? Okay. Okay. So uh, basically, let me uh, just give me a minute. Yeah, sorry about that. So uh, we have a cluster where we deploy the CI build of Litmus uh, every day. So here, uh, whatever you see in Litmus namespace is the CI build that is running. And we will be doing chaos on this particular uh, uh, deployed uh, litmus uh, so for that uh, we are using uh, litmus that is running in some other cluster and uh, here you can see we have uh, created some experiment test suite here we have some set of experiments and uh, we have uh, added some resilience probe to validate our hypothesis so but now how we are running that so here you can see there is a litmus ci uh, github workflow we have that uh, runs when we do the uh, release before the release we run that has e2e testing uh, so here we have included chaos testing as well as, uh, as in parallel with e2e we'll be doing the chaos testing as well so let me run it uh, for now then i will go with uh, some older execution so here in the chaos experiment stage what we are doing is first we are installing the litmus ctl cli for the litmus and then we are uh, setting the config and then we are running this particular experiment uh, whatever we have created for this and once we are running that experiment we are waiting for that experiment to get into the completed state and once it is completed we are extracting the resilience score and based on the resilience score uh, we are marking let's say if my resilience score that is coming up is less than 80 then we are marking it as fail and if it is greater than 80 then we are marking at pass so let's say if uh, uh, the resilience score is less than uh, 80 in that case uh, we will hold the release and we'll go and see why the why the resilience score got decreased uh, um, uh, to less than 80 and then we'll make the fixes so that the resilience score can again go above the 80 and then we'll do the release so this is about, as you can see here, uh, the experiment go, uh, started and it will run. So this is a short demo about uh, uh, how we are using Litmus Kiosk to do Kiosk on Litmus. So yeah, so let me uh, go to the slides. Yeah, this is about the demo. And now, now okay, like we have automated our PR checks. We have automated our QR quality gates. So how? we got uh, benefited from that so as we have added the uh, automation in pr so it makes the uh, pr review faster it makes the, the, the code got merged very faster and that makes as we have all uh, automated tests throughout uh, the release so it makes our release reliable as well it has the, the bug count has been decreased because of the all the e2e testing that we have and then uh, like as we have started our reliability journey so we we are doing and we are in, keep increasing the uh, the faults that we have and the probes and uh, we we uh, so that we can increase our uh, reliability of the litmus chaos and uh, like as you can see pr has some standard uh, call checks like build checks pr checks uh, vulnerability checks that by by adding those like we know like uh, okay these are uh, if it, all checks are passed that means we don't have to go and check those things we have to just go check the logic and then we can uh, approve those peers and we can add comment if required and then we can just merge this so that has a uh, like uh, we the PR merging time has just increased up a lot 
uh, by adding those checks. And uh, that, yeah, that, that covered the fourth point as well. And uh, as you know, like we have added vulnerability checks as well that uh, in our automation. So that is also uh, uh, adding our the se uh, security standards as well. Yeah, uh, Vedant, over to you. Uh, I think, yeah, that was a, a brief a demo about how you can integrate, uh, you know, chaos faults also your, into your um, release pipeline. I mean, similar, like we are using Git actions to do the same, similar way you can also do it as part of PRs. Um, so, I mean, before even talking about it, like, you know, on this slide, you know, let's talk about how you can do it too, like whatever uh, tools we have discussed, whatever process we discussed, right? So if you ask us, right, uh, we would say, you know, if you're just starting with these um, quality checks and if you already have a project with you, uh, which has a great community, uh, we would say start, uh, you know, small, don't add everything in a single go. Um, like speaking from experience, we have already tried it. You know, you will face issues. The thing is, you know, whenever you are adding a code quality check or unit test or build test, you know, there, there will be issues that you will, you know, identify. Now, um, before even fixing those issues, um, if you try to, you know, make it mandatory and there are other PRs who are trying to, other people who are trying to raise PRs, they will also, you know, face the same issues and, you know, um, they won't be able to merge their PR. So that actually um, leads to, you know, um, delay in merging a PR and then uh, which actually leads to, you know, delay in releases. So start small, um, add one tool at a time or one check at a time, fix the issues. And then, you know, the second point is make it mandatory. Uh, you are already did that check and you have done the, you know, big effort of fixing those issues. You don't want those issues to come back to the product again, right? So the better way is to make it mandatory. So that uh, once it is made mandatory, if someone is raising a PR, you know, it will show them there are issues and they can, you know, fix it on the go in the same PR. And uh, after all this, I think the last point is, you know, introduce chaos experiments. So that also, uh, you know, we would say don't go ahead and add everything into your pipeline. Play around it. Um, you know, um, you can deploy, you know, as, as in our case, you know, um, we have two litmus setups running. One we are using to do chaos on the other one. Play around it. Identify what chaos faults are useful for you. Not, you know, all faults are useful for you. You will be able to identify which chaos faults are actually helping you to identify issues in your own project. And once you have that list, you know, uh, move it to your release pipeline and then, you know, every, every release you can run them. And then, you know, I mean, this is just a one-time effort. You can have a, you know, scheduled way, like every week or bi-weekly, you uh, play around with the chaos fault and identify some new chaos fault and add them to your, you know, release pipeline. So that way your release pipeline, uh, keep having more and more chaos fault, but you know that they are the necessary faults, not, you know, because otherwise, you know, you can't, be, you would be running, you know, many number of, you know, chaos faults. So um, I think, yeah, that's uh, about how you can do it too. Um, and that's all we had as part of this um, session. Uh, the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Vedant, hey, Adarsh, maybe I'll try to take one question and then we can move to the next session. So I'll take uh, one question from Gaurav Okani. He asks, how can we automate chaos tests under a PR? Ah, yes. So um, as, uh, you know, as others uh, give a demo, right, we have two environments running. One where we were, you know, like as part of our CICD, whenever we were uh, merging up here, we keep deploying to that environment. So that is there. And then we have another um, environment which we can use to run chaos on the, you know, CICD environment. So you can have that type of, uh, you know, setup. Or I mean, if you see right, uh, if you look at our E2E GitHub workflow structure, as part of pipeline itself, we, you know, um, deploy chaos center also. We create a cluster, we create, uh, deploy chaos center, and we run our Cypress way. Similar way, um, what you can do is uh, whenever someone is raising a PR, you build the images. That is, I think, anyways, you would be doing. So when if you are building the images, why not just deploy them as part of your PR, right? And once it is deployed, then why not just run the chaos on the same, right? So yeah, and then, you know, in PI itself, we have two modes. Uh, the one which we didn't discuss today, I think the Helm agent, that, all, that is also you can use. But other one is which we discussed about is litmus detail. That is also the one uh, which you can use. Uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question. I hope this answers the question for Gaurav. I am moving all the other questions to the Litmus Chaos Slack. So folks who have more questions can join the Litmus Chaos uh, Slack uh, 
channel on the Kubernetes workspace. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining the session by Vedant and Adesh. Thanks, Thanks everyone.